So now it's uh, winter, so you can better see here the bunker. It's all First World War bunkers here. And uh, yeah. Mm. And there's the other one. Next one is here. I'll show that too. And there's one here. First World War in France, next to the Swiss border. See, there's the other one. Mm. Horrible. That was the one I just filmed there. It's full of it. It's absolutely full of it. So, here, yeah. the other two were there. One there, no one there. And all the plants have been, you know, mown away. So I'm going to have a better look here. Uh, there's one there too, where the trees are. There, and I think there as well. Full of it. Stupid European. What is that? A piece of bone here. What is this call, human? Mm. No. Looks like, I don't know what it is. Looks like a dog or something. Alien. Mm. Mm. Weird. It's just so enough, like. Kind of weird, eh? Yeah. Alien. Look at the tree there. It's a fox here. Ah, look, there's even a uh, metal construction or what is it, a pipeline? I think the last time I was here it was all grown over. So. Yeah. Oh, look, there's some more foxes here. Foxhole. Yeah. Oh, I'll just cut on top of it. Uh, it's not considered a good thing, you know, to actually not even to walk around here or to go in because things might blow up. Well, this is all, you know, not much to see. You know, and then again, you know, I already told you this, I can't tell you enough times. Hitler, the liar of the aristocracy, he said in Mein Kampf, the Jews are all behind it. It's absolutely bullocks. You know, it was the aristocracy, it was the Emperor William II of Germany. He put on a uniform with a helmet with his obelisk on it. And he said, now there's a war. People who refused, they were put in, the, in front of a firing squad, dead. The Emperor of Austria, he said, now he put on a uniform and a helmet. He said, now is the war. The King of Italy, he put on a uniform. He said, now there's a war. The Emperor of Britain, he said, now he put on the uniform, he said, now is the war. Don't refuse it, we're going to kill you. The Tsars, the pharaohs of Russia, they put on the uniform, he said, now there's a war. It was the aristocracy, wakey, wakey. They just need a scapegoat, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not a particular friend of the Jews, you know. I don't know. I don't really understand them. 
but it's not them. It's not them. You know, even if you don't like it, it doesn't mean they rule the world. You know, as the Muslims say, they don't like him because of the Palestine thing. Uh, so they say, you know, they, in order to, to have us have, you know, do the war for them because they're cowards. They always use the Germanic warriors and Celtic warriors, you know, to do the wars for them. The Muslims do the, try to do the same. So they say, well, they're the Zionists, they're the masters of the whole world, which is absolutely bullocks. Absolutely bullocks, it's a lie. They just need the scapegoats, you know? The aristocracy, and they're the pharaohs. This is all the work of the aristocracy. Wakey, wakey, wakey. Uh, yeah, well, everywhere you look here, it's, it's full of, all the forest, you know, it's full of bunkers and whatever it's in it, you know. Especially that forest behind here, that one there. Ah, that one there, it's going all the way down there, you know, full of bunkers and trenches. Going all the way to the mountains there. You can see the mountains there. I hope. It's going all the way to there. And then on the other side it's going all the way to Switzerland. Some more mountains there. All bunkers, bunkers. They're all going bunkers. You know, that's where it's from. The aristocracy, the pharaohs, they just have us kill each other. One million dead. The Battle of the Somme. For the English, the Germans, one million dead. The Battle of Verdun. You know, we are, we are a bred race. You know, nice and evil are two different things, you know. That's why they're different words. So, I mean, somebody can be not nice. It doesn't mean he's evil or she, yeah. And somebody can be really adorable, you know like the Swiss, and be real evil. I mean, we've been fooled. That, that's how we get fooled, folks. By adorable, charming people. This here, this has been done by adorable, charming people who just, who just fools us in, you know? And somebody can be really adorable and nice, you know, like the nice neighbor next door with a big cellar. And a lot of children disappearing around in the area you know, this is how we get fooled so somebody's not being nice it's not a criteria for you know being evil or not <laughs> it's usually more the country you know you know like the homo neighbor you know being nice and adorable and sweet and all that you know and a lot of boys being raped around in the area you know and disappearing and and you see what I mean? So don't have yourself fooled by, you know, you don't like somebody or somebody is not nice or arrogant and have, has a big mouth like you might think about the Jews or other people or about me. Well, I'm not a Jew anyway. Uh, you know, but it doesn't mean somebody who's not nice that he's bad and evil, you know. This is one of the main reasons humanity is losing. Because we believe all those nice people and charming, adorable people, you know, who are nice and clean like the aristocracy, yeah? While somebody is opening his mouth and being honest about it, you know, he gets like uh, pushed away. Wakey, wakey, wakey. Some more First World War bunker positions, shot to pieces. Stupid wars. It's all by the pharaohs. This was an old um, artillery um, uh, what's the name? A um, to um, to find the artillery positions. Uh, I forgot the name in English. 
a rec a reconnaissance, uh, reconnaissance. Yeah. So they had all the, you know, like uh, inside here, guys sitting here with. Uh, uh, it was Germans, First World War, machine gun post there. Ah. An observatory of the art artillery, that's the word. So that says an observatory. Now the guys, stupid wars. Stupid humanity. Why do you believe the, the upper class? Why do you believe them? Don't believe them, don't do their wars. We need a real war against the enemy within and a base Switzerland, yeah? It was the... All the emperors and kings of Europe, they said, and the Tsars, they said, now is a war, you go and kill yourselves, eh? Don't do it. There's an ammunition bunker here, it's all First World War. There's some more here. From the German side. Uh, the French were more like attacking here. Ammunition bunkers, all shot to pieces here. Stupid humanity, don't do their wars for them. For the aristocracy, they only want to enrich each other, um, um, themselves and uh, take our women. To inject their pharaonic genetics in the whole of our women. That's what they want. That's why they put obelisks everywhere, which is a penis. You know, it's a symbol of warfare. So here it says, here in Alsace, um, during the 30-year war, the, the entire population was murdered by the Swiss mercenary and it was being replaced by the, uh, by the, uh, by the Swiss, l'immigration Swiss, Swiss. You see, that's what I've been telling you. There's a buffer zone all around Switzerland and in the village next to here, there was even a guy who was in the SS in Auschwitz. The commander was speaking Swiss German. I filmed the guy, you know, in 2012, but YouTube took it off. I hid it somewhere in another video. So here's the, uh, the church. It was used as a, uh, uh, as a hospital at Lazarette in the uh, First World War. There's been enormous sufferings here, that's why I know, but it's there. So all around Switzerland, there's a buffer zone. And some more First World War bunkers. I think I can see here, behind here, there's a... Uh, the trenches. Yeah. Stupid humanity, really. They're just stupid. There must have been some cannons on top of it. An, observ uh, an artillery observatory. Yeah. I can even can go inside. Ah. <clears throat> Somebody's been grilling here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no, it's eh? must have been cold in it. Stupid people. Machine gun post there. Oh shit. <clears throat> That's not good, I hope. Oh look at that. <laughs> This is to ring the door. No, it must have been a door in there. Hmm. <clears throat> what is the old artillery observatory? Observatories? What is this? So it must be. Well, let's have a look on top then. I'm here on top of the artillery observatory of the, uh, the First World War. There must have been some wooden construction here on top of it. Probably no plastic, eh? So that looks like some trenches there. So this is about, I don't know, about 50 kilometers from Switzerland. That's where it's getting richer and richer. Because there were no Jews who wanted to go into the army, almost, you know, and they say, well, you know, it's against our religion, just like they don't go into the Zionist army, as they say themselves. Uh, the real serious guys, they don't. So they had to find another solution for the, uh, for the human breeding, you know, 
put them in a concentration camp and get rid of the ones that Pharaoh didn't like. Yeah. Okay. Me, Pharaoh, and stupid humanity. I still got my uh, stigmata. Funny. Can't figure that out. So these are definitely trenches. You know, like it is, uh, you know, a, a ditch is going straight. You know, you don't, you know, the, the ditch in the middle of the forest. Come on. And uh, because the trees already, they, they keep the water. Like you know, and here it's going around the corner. It's not straight. Somewhere there. I don't really see it. Uh, yeah, that's going around the corner here. So it's definitely not a ditch. Ditch are straight. Trenches are going like in, around, you know. And uh, the meadows are there. So there's no ditches in the middle of a forest. Uh, yesterday there were some kids go, going around with a metal detector. So all peoples have been having it, you know. We had two world wars, the Whiteys had, you know, and uh, the Thirty Year War and massacres and the uh, Caesar killing all the Celts and the Jews had their genocide, in Africa genocides, the, uh, in Vietnam almost a genocide, a, Rus a genocide against the Russian people, the German people in the Thirty Year War, Southeast Asia, of course the South Americans, you know, the Indians, the Incas, we all had their our genocides, all the peoples of the earth, except one, and now it's their turn, the Muslims. They've always been defending their territory, you know, they, they could do it, they could manage with a, uh, with a round Muslim sword, they manage on horseback. But now with all the weapons we have, cannons and helicopters, now it's their turn. The final, the final peoples of the earth, it's their turn to be wasted, the last ones. Even the Eskimos had that genocide, you know, well they are Indians anyway. So now that's why there's a war against the Muslims. And another one, all, it's all First World War. People still finding a lot of bodies here. Now look. No, well, I can't with my backpack, but well, there's nothing to see anyway. And uh, yeah, it's not very much. So it's a ah, abri d'infanterie. It's a uh, infantry. Uh, Infant place for the infantry. You, know, you can see the images here. And the other ones, they were obs artillery observatory posts. And uh, so they were just, they said, well, you go there, stupid humanity, you just go there by the millions. And the cannons are already adjusted, adjusted to that from both sides. The English, the British, American, French, the German cannons, they're all adjusted to that, to that point there. And we're going to shoot you to pieces. That's what the war is all about. Believe me. The enemy was not the Germans, nor the French, nor the British, nor the Americans, nor the Russians. The enemy is Pharaoh. I already see another one at the end there. Got you. So that's the enemy. There's a war within. They're very smart. Now here it says 19, built 1917, they even put it on it. About 9 cent zip cent. Uh, stupid humanity, don't, don't do their wars for them. It's all about geostrategic, all geostrategic wars so they can parasite on us. And we're their slaves. And another one, all First World War. Yeah. Well, they say it's for the infantry. Well, it's a bit small for the infantry. You know, the other one, for the officers, for the pharaohs. So they could hide in there, you know. The infantry was shot to pieces in the forest, in the land, by the millions. It's 
Oh, <laughs> never seen an infantry barracks like that, eh? Oh, the officers piled up here, they had the electricity here, they had the generator. You know, a, a door in it, you see? They had the door in here. Now, yeah, where they can cook here. Cozy. But there's only... There's only a place for... Four infantry. Four infantrymen. Come on. <laughs> What a lie, you know, it's not for the infantry. All right, for the officers. The Pharaoh. Let's go to the next one. Bum craters here and here. Looks like a little one, actually. Where is it? Uh, I think here, out yeah, there. And here too, there's another one. Uh, I can't see it now. Oh, there, there's another one. Full of it. Looks like a little one actually, looks like a, like a mortar maybe. So, let's find another bunker. Here too, another bomb crater. So you people, you know, what's going on in Afghanistan and, you know, Iraq now? It has already happened in Europe. We're also victims, the YTs. Uh, good warriors though. That's why they use this. Misuse this. There's another bomb crater here next to the to some more bunkers here. And uh, well, let's have a look then. Let's see what bullocks they're gonna tell us now. <laughs> Infantry barracks go on. Well, that's a bit narrow, eh? Good to stop the wind. And it's good to stop the wind, to stop bullets here, yeah, and sting in front of it for the firing squad. Ah. I'm not sure what I want to go in with my backpack. There's probably there's nothing to see anyway. Then I want to take. Oh. Looks like Georgia Guidestones, eh? <laughs> Chimney. Some wood here. Mm. Yeah, well. Yeah. Well, I'll go in there. Check off my sack. Wait a minute. Yeah. We're all victims of this pharaohs here. No. Bloody Ferris, this has been, looks like it's been shot. Oh, it was bigger, look, yeah, it was more. And there too, there's more. Yeah. This is just what is left of it, there was a hole. Oh, let's have a look inside them. Me, Pharaoh. Definitely the Pharaohs in sight. Millions of Europeans that just died on the battlefield around. And uh, it's only for the officers. Oh. The old Pharaohs, I tell you. So, well, let's have a look then, eh? Hmm, a weird place here. Hmm. Wonder what they use it for. Probably for cooking. Well, that's too narrow. My fat body doesn't pass through there. No. Sunshine. Look, here's some more. There's another one. That was the one. And here's one more. You can see it's all going in the ground here. It's all underground. See? Oh, 
Another narrow one like this. So every time it's the same principle. Uh, it's probably going deep underground, which is all being buried. Shouldn't walk too much here in this forest, I think. Well, they're all yellow lines here. <laughs> Don't trespass, or what is it? Zone interdite. Uh, it's forbidden here. Gendarmerie Nationale. The police. Zone interdite. Too dangerous, probably. Oh my, so don't go further there. There's all sorts of pieces here. And uh, well, it's not going to blow me up now. Probably had a couple of accidents here. Uh, bombs do blow up here all the time. You better not go digging here. Bomb holes. <coughs> For ammunition, it says. Oh. I'm not sure. I'm full of bomb craters here. So this is a hundred years ago, man. still alive. And another one next to a, I don't know, what is it, a lake. So, uh, probably a machine gun uh, post here. I don't know, really. Have a look inside here. Yeah. All first World War shit. <clears throat> no. no That's not good. that walls for them. Now what is it all bring? You know? The survivors you know they're here on the motorway. Try to survive, don't do it. Get rid of your own officers. So if this comes down in your tent, if this comes howling down you know on your tent in the night, well, you're dead. Especially a big one like that one there, you know. So I always look up, it's quite a healthy tree there, but this one, uh-uh, don't sleep under it, look at it, they, they, they'll fall down soon, don't ever sleep under one like this here, let's go somewhere else, yeah. at least your tent will be broken so you have to sleep in the bunker next to it, yeah. and more World War I bunkers, Ah, you stupid humanity. I repeat it all the time. Don't do that wash for them. We need a real war. Yeah, war is good. A real war. Close it. Oh. Yeah. This one's all shot to pieces. <clears throat> Bomb craters all over.
Oh, look, a Templar's cross. Oh, look at this. What do you know? 1914. No, 1944. Yeah, oh, come on. No, 1914. The W is from. The Emperor William II, the ar aristocracy, right? Eh? You died for a bloody emperor. That's what you died for, you stupid humanity, for a pharaoh. He put on a uniform and he said, now there's a war. Battalion I-362 or something. Battalion 1362. Yeah. Machine gun post. Another William, just like the William of Orange. You see, it's all Templar stuff, eh? It's all, it's a war, you know, from the New World Order against the Old World Order. That was, that was that's what it was about. And, uh, uh, and we had to die. You see, it's Templar stuff, eh? Templar's cross. Pyramid. I've shown it to you. Look at my video, the um, the neutral base of the uh, uh, the neutral base of I don't remember. I'm tired. So it's full of it here. Another bunker. So then the other clown came in 19 uh, was it 1939? Another war, and he said the Jews did it. Bullocks, it's the Emperor, he saw it. W on it, Emperor William II. Yeah, what's this? Die for something else? What did they die for this time? Oh. And an artillery position. Oh. What's that? They don't go in here, it's all shot to pieces. There's what's left of it here. And there's some more there. Yeah. Now look, and some more. It was, uh, they said it was a, uh, for medical help here. And, uh, oh, that was the church. Metal can help, gee, man. What would it be like to lying, be lying here for nothing? Just for the Emperor, for the Pharaoh, against the other ones of the New World Order. So the Emperor, apparently, he was of the New World Order. Another bunker of the First World War, drowning in the water. są zamknięte. Tutaj jest widok od strony drogi. Widzimy właśnie ogrodzenie i dom. Ale kiedy bramy ogrodzeniowe się otwierają, naszym oczom ukazuje się właśnie taki plac przed budynkiem albo sam budynek i fragmenty ogrodu. O co chodzi? Już tłumaczę. Wznosimy się ciut wyżej i kiedy dom jest zamknięty, jest surowym prostopadłościanem, takim klocuszkiem, ale kiedy otwiera się na ogród, to między innymi dwie ściany, wschodnia i zachodnia, dojeżdżają do ogrodzenia i tworzą taki plac przedwejściowy. Na czym to polega w ogóle? O co chodzi? Kiedy rodzice są w ogrodzie, na przykład imprezują, a dzieciak otwiera komuś domofonem drzwi, to ten ktoś wchodzi do środka, na ten plac przedwejściowy i tyle, i czeka, aż go wpuszczą albo nie wpuszczą. 
Cały bajer polega na tym, że on nie jest w stanie się dostać do ogrodu. Żeby dojść do ogrodu, musi przejść przez budynek. Kiedy dom jest zamknięty, strefa bezpieczna zawiera się w obrysie budynku. Ale kiedy otwiera się na ogród, te dwie ściany dojeżdżają do ogrodzenia, to wtedy jego strefa bezpieczna poszerza się o otaczający dom ogród. Nowatorstwo tego budynku polega na tym, że ruchome elementy ingerują w urbanistykę działki, zmieniając ją. Jest to pierwszy tego typu, już nie tylko dom, ale w ogóle pierwszy tego typu budynek na świecie. Tutaj widzimy ten moment, kiedy ściany dobijają do ogrodzenia, cały budynek się otwiera. Plan piętra. Widzimy, że obok budynku jest taki pawilon. To jest budynek, w którym zlokalizowany jest basen. On jest jakby wyrzucony troszkę poza strefę ścisłego bezpieczeństwa. Znajduje się w ogrodzie. Tu już widok z ogrodu, kiedy budynek jest zamknięty oraz kiedy dom jest otwarty. Przesuwna ściana ma 22 metry długości i 2,20 wysokości. Okiennice, które, które widać, są wysokie na 2,80 i szerokie na 3,5 metra. Wszystkie te elementy zachowują grubość zewnętrznych ścian budynku, czyli dokładnie 45 cm. Widzimy dom od strony południowej. Obok znajduje się budynek basenu. Na jego dachu umieszczony jest taras. Można się dostać na niego przechodząc przez most zwodzony, który jest kolejnym ruchomym elementem tego budynku. Tutaj elewacja południowa, przesłonięta potężną bramą o wymiarach 14 na 6, naprawdę potężna. Potężne bloki, które przejeżdżają, te wymiary 22 metry, wysokość 2,80, 2,20, grubość prawie pół metra, naprawdę robią wrażenie. I tu pora na wyjaśnienie, jak to wszystko jest zbudowane i jak to działa. Tak wygląda konstrukcja najdłuższej przesuwnej ściany tego budynku. To stalowa kratownica. Jej grubość zbliżona do grubości ściany wynika z tego, że jest całkowicie wypełniona wełną mineralną, co powoduje, że i ona, jak i pozostałe przegrody mają bardzo dobre właściwości izolacyjne. Napędza ją elektryczny silnik zabudowany w ścianie. W ten sam sposób działają wszystkie pozostałe ruchome elementy tego budynku. Okiennice, brama rolowana czy most zwodzony. Rodzi się pytanie, jakim materiałem one są obłożone. Oczywiście drewnem, lekkim materiałem, wodoodporną, olchową sklejką, pobejcowaną na bardzo fajny sposób. Nie jest to jedyny powód, dla którego ono się tam znalazło. Dom wiejski, czyli również stare stodoły, ciemne drewno, to jest drugi, drugi powód zastosowania akurat takiego materiału, ażeby ten dom wpisał się w tą sielską, wiejską okolicę, i on właśnie taki jest, taki leniwy, spokojny. Kiedy tam jesteśmy, mamy wrażenie, że czas się zatrzymuje. Naprawdę to cudowne miejsce. Interesujący moment w życiu tego budynku. Przez cały dzień budynek jest przesiąknięty światłem, ale kiedy otula go zmierz, ten proces się odwraca. On zaczyna wtedy emanować ciepłem, tym światłem wewnętrznym, które zresztą za chwilę zostanie zamknięte w jego obrysie. Dom zamknie się, żeby chronić swoich mieszkańców, ale też, żeby akumulować energię, którą uzyskał w przeciągu całego dnia. I tu bardzo ważna rzecz, bo dzięki grubym, tym ciepłym przesłonom jest to budynek bardzo niskoenergetyczny. Ale nie tylko. Jest bardzo inteligentnym budynkiem pasywnym, który za dnia może przyjmować energię, oczywiście kiedy tego potrzebuje, i w nocy, oczywiście też kiedy to jest potrzebne, może ją jeszcze lepiej akumulować. Powstaje pewien niekończący się cykl. Kiedy wstaje słońce, budynek otwiera się na ogród, automatycznie znów wytwarza się ta strefa przedwejściowa, a dom znów, znów może akumulować energię. W tym budynku jest coś takiego fajnego, ciekawego, że on każdego dnia identycznie się zachowuje. Jak popatrzysz na roślinę, ona też każdego dnia zachowuje się identycznie. W nocy się zamyka, wieczorem chroni, chroni siebie a za dnia otwiera się maksymalnie, czerpiąc wiesz, z otoczenia, otwierając się. Z jednej strony łapie światło, ale sama forma tej roślinki staje się interesująca, fajna, wiesz, atrakcyjna. Podobnie z tym budynkiem. Kiedy on się kurczy, jest, można powiedzieć, nawet nieładny, jest klockiem, ale kiedy on się otwiera, staje się bardzo przyjaznym, ładnym, interesującym budynkiem. Przywykło się uważać, że dom organiczny to budynek, który jakoś swoją formą nawiązuje do, do przyrody, 
że jest bardziej obły, ale to jest takie płytkie, moim zdaniem, powierzchowne podejście. Organiczność tego domu nie sprowadza się do jego formy, lecz wyraża się sposobem jego funkcjonowania.